In this video, we're going to take a look at sculpting geometry. Maya offers us the Sculpt Geometry tool, which allows us to model objects with more of an organic feel. We're allowed to make changes to a lot of geometry all at once and use a brush in a similar manner to sculpting on clay. Let's take a look. Need to first select the object that I want to sculpt on, and we'll go to Mesh Tools, Sculpt Geometry Tool. Now the Sculpt Geometry Tool has lots of different options, so I like to open those tool options and leave those up so that I can quickly go back and forth between the two. The first set of attributes that I have are the Radius Upper Limit and the Radius Lower Limit. This is of the brush size itself. If I press B and scroll left to right, I will get the upper limit of the brush size. The lower limit is the distance that I can go to decrease the size of my brush. We really only need to adjust the upper limit, but if you wanted to restrict the size of the brush to a certain value, you could do so with the lower limit. The opacity allows us to soften our brush or soften the effect of our brush. Now to show the full effects of this, I'm gonna create a polygon plane. And let's put our crow just on a layer for right now and hide that. And we'll scale that plane up. And I'll go back into my Sculpt Geometry tool. And I'm gonna leave my opacity there at one. My default operation is set to push. So this will push the geometry in a downward manner. Now notice that there is a black arrow. We'll zoom up here a little bit. But right in the center I have a black arrow that is telling me that I'm going to push the geometry in that direction. If I choose the option next to it, pull, that arrow is going to flip okay, and go up. Now I can toggle between the two by just simply holding control on the keyboard. So let's move up here so we can see that opacity and we'll go back to push. And I'll just draw a stroke across the surface. So I'm just holding the left mouse button and just drawing directly on that surface and it will sculpt my geometry. Now what it's doing is it's actually pushing the geometry, the distance of the maximum displacement. If I switch to a side view here, you can see that I've pushed my geometry a whole value of one. So I have one whole unit there, which is what my maximum displacement is set to. Now I can still sculpt on that geometry by going over that surface again. When I do so, it'll then push it another unit. Let's undo that. Now, if I use my opacity, and we'll set that to 0.5, it's only going to push half a unit down, but it's going to be based on the overall stroke. So I can continually go over that area and push it to the full maximum displacement. I'm gonna undo that and let's drop this down a little bit further. And now we can see that when I go over it, it's much more subtle. But now I don't let go and I can just go back and basically scribble on the surface until it reaches that maximum displacement. I like to work with an opacity value less than one so that I can go over the surface continually and do it more as a build up type method in sculpting. This way I can see gradual changes to my surface as opposed to seeing it entirely and having to undo and go back. Let's bring our crow back and I'm going to delete that grid. And let's take a look here at a couple of areas that we can manipulate. So we looked at the push and the pull. And you can see if I sculpt here, I'm going to hold control. I can pull some of that wing out if I wanted to make it look a little bit thicker. But beyond push and pull, I then have smooth. And that's this option here. The Smooth tool allows me to average the vertices that I'm sculpting on. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. And you can see his head has kind of a square back to it. We don't want that. We want that to be more rounded. 
I could use the smooth brush to go over that area and average the vertices. Now that's not really taking into account the shape, so it is kind of crushing it down. I'm losing some volume there. Let's undo that and instead use the next tool over, which is the Relax brush. Relax is going to try to retain the shape of the object. Notice how it keeps that volume and doesn't collapse it. Now I did that in two different strokes, but let's undo. And this time, I'm going to scroll down and expand the stroke rollout and turn on Reflection. Now essentially I get two brushes, but what it's going to do for me here is allow me to sculpt on both sides of the object at once. And I'll just relax both of those areas to soften that out. Now we get a much more subtle transition with the back of the head. And maybe that pulled out a little bit too much, so I'll go to the push brush. And I'm going to hold control and just do our opposite there and just kind of push that in a little bit. Now, whenever we sculpt, it's going to push into the direction of the normal unless I tell it otherwise. So this isn't really going in the direction I want it to. So I can change the reference vector. So right now it's based upon the normal. We know that those normals are perpendicular to the surface. But what I really want it to do is go into the X. So I'll choose the X axis, And I'm going to hold Control again to push that in. But now it's having the same effect on the opposite side, but not the effect I want because it's pushing it in the same direction. So I want it to be flipped. So let's undo. And I'll scroll back down and choose Invert Reference Vector. Now this is under the Stroke Rollout in the same spot where we checked Reflection. And we'll choose Invert. Now, when I come back onto the surface, you can see both of those arrows are pointing at each other. And that will then push in opposite directions, giving me the effect that I'm after. And we'll just pull that back out just a little bit. Go back up. Now we also have the pinch brush, which will allow us to tighten areas. And I'm going to raise that opacity back up so we can see this a little bit better. And we'll increase that brush. Now we can only pinch the available geometry. There we go. So I'm going to make that brush a little bit bigger. And you can see we can pinch that down. So if I wanted to make this wing a little bit thinner, we could pinch that. And let's undo that. Bring that back. And then the last one here we have is our slide brush. And I'm just going to choose to reset the tool and then grab that slide brush. And with this brush, wherever I push my stroke is going to be the direction that I slide in. This is very useful for evening out our geometry as it's retaining the shape of the surface. So it's pushing in the direction of that surface normal. And at the very end there, let's just create a stroke here, we have the erase brush. So I did some pushing and pulling right there, and then I can go back with the erase and remove everything that I just did. Now the erase brush only works during the particular sculpting session that you're in. For instance, if I sculpt on the surface and then back out just by choosing select, and then I'll select the model and go back into the tool, I cannot erase what I had done previously. We can still just hit undo, and that'll take us back. But the erase tool can be useful because we can pull stuff out, then choose erase, and bring our opacity down, and just erase a little bit, just to retain some of the changes that we added.